please welcome yeah. to the TEDxSF stage, Naveen Jain. Imagine the world. Is there any problem in the world that can't be solved through innovation and entrepreneurship? So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what is innovation, what's entrepreneurship, and what are the problems, these grand challenges that we are talking about. So let's just step back for a second and let's look at our evolution of humans. It took us from the beginning of time until about 250 years ago, we reached the population of 1 billion people. It took us another 125 years before we got to the population of 2 billion. And imagine in the next 100 years, here we stand with 7 billion people. And every one of us are asking ourselves, what do we do with 7 billion people? How do we provide them with the health? And the question really is, is 7 billion the problem or is 7 billion the solution? When you talk about and saying two minds are better than one, imagine the 7 billion minds together working on a problem. Imagine when we are all connected and the 7 billion people are connected for the first time when they are not just a consumer of information, they become the producer of ideas. And what if their ideas for the first time are being heard? And as we all know, the people who have never been heard from, these are the people who are going to come up with the most disruptive innovation. And here is why. Our human mind is designed as an optimization of pattern matching device. How many of you in this room are experts in your own field? Raise your hands. Guess what? You're all useless as far as your industry is concerned. And here's why, a experts can only give you the incremental evolution and every disruptive solution comes from the non-experts. When you're a non-experts, you look at the world from abstract reasoning and you're not looking at the world from how it has been done before. So the innovation does not equal invention. Innovators are not the people who go out and invent something. Innovators are the people who take the great ideas and go out and package them differently than they have been packaged before. For example, when you look at the things, a couple of years ago when we had the oil spill on the Gulf, the British Petroleum spent $20 billion cleaning up that oil. And they were using exactly the same solution that was used by Axon Waldies 10 years ago. I was on the board of XPRIZE, and we thought, what if we could launch a prize just for $1 million? Not a $1 billion, $1 million prize. That builds a solution for the oil cleanup that is going to be at least twice as good. Imagine the 130 teams applied, and one of the finalist team was consisted of three people, a auto mechanic, a tattoo parlor, and a dentist. Honest to God, it starts like a really, it start of a really bad joke, but that was the team. <laughs> and it so happened that mechanic was sitting at a tattoo parlor, and tattoo parlor guy asked him, do you know of this $1 million prize? You are a mechanic, can't you build something like that that can clean up the oil? And he said, I heard about the prize. Don't you think the oil spill happens from the drilling? I know my dentist does a lot of drilling, I should ask him. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how they got together. Now, my thinking is, what if now you can solve something like this? What, if, what about the really grand challenges like education? How do we go out and solve the problem of education, of educating 7 billion people? And the problem is we always look at the problem the same way. We think the education or healthcare is an infrastructure problem. That means we have to build the schools or you have to build the hospitals. The fact is, both of these problems are nothing but the information gap problem. What if you can able to deliver the education on a $25 handheld device? What if the $25 handheld device with a small set of sensors that cost three cents or five cents can diagnose all the common diseases that a village girl, instead of getting married at an early age and getting abused, what if she becomes a village doctor and starts to solve those problems? So you have to start thinking, how do we think about a scalable solution? How do we think about a solution like sustainable solution. The problem with the sustainability movement has been the sustainability, when people talk about sustainability, what they're talking about is conservation. 
use less of what we have. That's not how we solve problem. When you want something, you create more of what you need, not use less of what you have. You can create abundance of resources for what you need. And you can never grow a company by cutting costs. You grow a company by increasing revenue. So let's go out and create more education. Let's go create a cheaper, better, affordable health. Let's create clean water. Let's create safe and uh, renewable energy. So how do we do that? Let me focus for a few minutes on education. You look at a child, the same child who can solve some of the most complex problem in a video game, like a World of Warcraft, really tough game by the way. The same kid struggles with the basic math in the class. Why would that happen? Is this child really dumb? The answer is no. The child is not being stimulated. Child is not being catered to how the brain learns. So I spent last three years learning about how does human brain learn? What is human brain good at? How do you go out and teach something and allow brain to learn? So what happens is we are teaching the kids the facts. And what we don't realize is every child who has a smartphone has access to more information than the President Clinton had as the President. So all the facts are available on your fingertips. What we need to teach is how to learn and how to utilize these facts to solve a specific problem. Every kid learns differently. What if your education system, as opposed to kid adapting to the learning how the teacher teaches, what if the education system adapts to how the child learns? Some, some children learn graphically, some children learn conceptually, some learn in a different way. What if your education system adapts to it? What if you change the paradigm where it is not a fixed time variable learning, it becomes a fixed learning variable time. So it's not about six months to teach somebody. It is about whether it takes three days or three months, you have to learn equivalent of an A. It is no different than a video game. You can't go to a level two unless you pass the level one. What if you can teach by learn by teaching? What if you can create an avatar and you give a personality of a friend, and what if a child actually teaches the avatar, and avatar takes the test? And if you do that, imagine it takes away all the pressure of the mother saying, my child is really bright, but he's really bad at taking tests. Imagine that, right? Because every mother thinks the child is Einstein, right? <laughs> and some of those kids are, really are, and some are not. But what if that Einstein or not Einstein can teach the avatar, and avatar comes back and says, son, you're really not that bright. <laughs> or you need to really learn something more before you can go to the next level. And you really learn by teaching. And at the same time, the avatar teaches, but you have to teach it back for it to take a test. Imagine all of these problems, whether it's education, whether it's healthcare. Now you say, how are you going to solve the problem of poverty, or how are you going to solve the problem of lack of food? But imagine today we spend all the energy on cattle raising. If you want to eat meat, what if you can create the bio factories where you can take a stem cell and have nothing but the factories of muscle tissues? So at the end of the day, you neither you have to spend all the water on agriculture. And as you know, the cattle are probably the biggest source of methane, which is the biggest source of the uh, depletion of ozone, ozone layer. So if you can somehow create the meat that's done exactly how nature does in a factory, you don't have to, you can use the same agriculture field for feeding the humans, not the cattle. What if you can use the synthetic bacteria to clean the water? What if you can create the synthetic bacteria that can actually take the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and use the salt water to actually convert the salt water into a fossil fuel. None of these things that I'm talking about are science fiction. All of these technologies actually exist today. So you as an entrepreneur have to go out and do something about it. So the entrepreneurship is nothing but a state of mind. People think there are three types of people in this world. There are people who can see the problem and since all of us are good at it, we call them human beings. Some of us can, in fact, find the solution to these problems, and we call them visionaries. And I think the heroes of the world really are the people who go out and take these ideas and implement them. And these heroes, we call them entrepreneurs. And these are the people who are going to go out and find the greatest solutions to every problem out there. 
And I can tell you that if you want to create a billion dollar company, it's really easy. Go out and solve a $10 billion problem. You don't create a billion dollar company by solving a million dollar problem. So go out and be an entrepreneur and make your country proud. Thank you.